And the answer is... Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Greg. Welcome back to my machine shop. Today is a continuation of our last video where we created the blank for the Wallaby cylinder block. Today we're going to be manually machining this to the final configuration. In this video series, we emphasize the use of the CNC machine and Fusion 360 cam to create our parts. However, we have plans for both CNC machining and manual machining. So if you were, wanted to machine the block on your CNC router, go ahead and take your blank and set it on the shelf. We'll be getting to that once we build up our Fusion 360 skills. But today, we're going to throw this onto the mill and machine it manually. All right, let's take a look at the print. So this is the plan I've come up with to machine out the pocket for the water jacket. I'm going to be using a quarter inch flat end mills, both a roughing mill and a finishing mill. So I'm going to establish the zero point right in the center of the part. And then I have defined the dimensions for the where the tool will end up in the four corners. So the finishing mill will want to end up this distance here from the center, 422 in the y direction, 1.22 in the x direction. I've also added another little circle here indicating where I want the roughing mill to end up in the corners, 1.205 in the x direction and 0.407 in the y direction. These other corners will be the same dimensions. The sign will just be different. Now, an interesting note, um, I did not include this print as a part of the plans. Typically, machinists don't like to be told how to machine the part. They just want to be told what the dimensions are, and they want to be free to figure out how to do it themselves. So I'm wearing two different hats here. Here, I've developed the plans. But here, I'm putting on my machinist hat, and I could have done this uh, in pencil on the part, but I thought it would be easier to show it to you if I made it a little prettier. Okay, that's the plan. Let's make some chips. But before we run off, I did want to let you know of a mistake that I almost made. So I made this print for quarter-inch end mills, two quarter-inch end mills. Well, as I was going through my drawer looking for the end mills I was going to use, I found this 3 8 inch end mill, and I thought to myself, wow, I could really uh, make quicker work of it and remove the, the uh, material quicker. However, if I use this end mill and use these dimensions, I would remove too much material and ruin my part. So I'm not going to do that, even though it was probably a good idea in hindsight. So I'm going to check one last time that I don't have any burrs on any of the edges that might throw off the alignment of this in my vise. We tap our workpiece firmly against the parallels, then tighten the vise. We edge find off the left side, center our x-axis, then edge find off the front and center our y-axis, then move and edge find off the left side, and hit the half button that will center our x-axis on the part, then edge find on the back of the part. Now I want to pause here and compare our measured distance with what the edge finder says. Remember, the edge finder adds a tenth of an inch on each side, so we're within a thousandth of an inch. That's not going to happen every time. We center our y-axis on the part. So we've loaded our quarter-inch roughing mill. We're going to zero the Z axis, vertical axis, on the DRO. Come down and touch off on the top of the workpiece. And zero the quill DRO. So 
So there's a couple things I don't like about our roughing plan here. First of all, I'm not interested in trying to watch the DRO as it approaches every single edge. Second of all, this quarter inch roughing mill has got quite a lot of stick out, which is nice for reaching down into this part. But the amount of force I'm putting on the, the mill as I machine, I'm afraid I could break this. So I'm gonna make do two things different. First of all, I'm gonna die kim the outside, and put in some, some lines that I can visually rough this part to. I'm not worrying about the DRO until I finish my final pass. And secondly, I'm going to go back to that 3 8 roughing mill, which would be able to remove a lot of material quicker. Okay, let's try this again. This is where we are at the end of our roughing operation. Our first finishing operation will be to bring our pocket to the proper depth. We will measure from the top face to the bottom of the pocket and then from the top face to the vise as a double check. And zero the quill DRO. Milling the pocket bottom is not shown here. We'll move on to milling the pocket walls. So on the finishing pass, I'm going to go down and just touch off to the back and then make a single circuit around the outside, climb milling all the way. I think that's enough for today. We finished milling the pocket for the water jacket for the cylinder block on our Wallaby 30cc engine. So I learned a few things today. First off, it's way too much trouble to use the DRO when doing a roughing operation. Lay down some die kim, scribe some marks, and make sure you just stay clear of them with your roughing tool. Much quicker and less hassle. The second thing was it was a lot of work roughing out all of this material. I should have taken a big drill and removed most of it like I did here. And then I would have only had a little bit of roughing and then a little bit of finishing and we would have been done. And I almost got into trouble forgetting about that extra 10 thousandths I added to the top of the block. It wasn't on the print anywhere and when I went to put the pocket in, I forgot about it and centered the pocket when it should have been offset. Um, I remember just before I did the finishing operation, so I, I was able to maintain that extra 10,000th. And if I hadn't, that's a small enough amount that I probably could have worked around it. I got to figure out a way to remember when I add extra material that's not on the print uh, for subsequent operations that I may do days or weeks later. And the last thing I learned was to try to use the biggest roughing mill that you can get away with on your mill. I started out with a quarter inch mill and it was just going too slowly and I had to be too careful not to break it. If I had started with a 3 8 roughing mill from the very beginning, again, it would have been much quicker. Well, as I said before, I think that's enough for today. I'm Greg. Thanks for visiting me in my machine shop. Next time, we'll tackle machining the top. Until then, take care. <laughs>